Frank Martin comes out and gets the win. Impressive victory for the young man. Now, before I break that all down, I just want to say my hat goes off to both of these young men, actually. So many fighters these days seem to do everything they can to avoid hard fights, to avoid fights they may lose, to avoid fights against highly talented opposition. And both of these guys are hot prospects, young guys, bright futures, and they came out there and put their O on the line to progress their career. So my hat's off to both of them. Both, neither one of these men were scared, and that's a great thing to see. Now going into this one, I was going with Frank Mark. Both of these guys, like I said, highly skilled, and without getting into too much of the details, I'll just say that I was looking at Martin, I was leaning with him based on three things. Number one was his defense. His, his, his style, his technique, everything is just a little bit tighter. He's just a little bit more defensively responsible. He doesn't just rely on his offense to shut down the other guy's offense, right? He doesn't just rely on his offense to be his defense. Second thing is his body work. He's just known for a guy who's going to come in there and from the opening bell to the closing one, he is going to go to the body early, often, and hard. And number three, it's the camp that he works with. He's in there, he's training with Derek James, who is do, turning out some phenomenal work lately. He's in there with Errol Spence Jr. He's in there with Jamel Charlo. Iron sharp and iron, iron. And when you're around guys that are that good, when you're, I'm sure the, um, the, the quality of the sparring that they're bringing in is top notch, it's going to rub off. Just think about it from this perspective as well. I'm, I'm sure a man like Derek James has a lot of people who want to train with him. He's only one guy. He can't scale things out. He's only going to actually get in there and work with people that he thinks are incredibly talented, have a high work ethic, and that they're going to go far. Otherwise, he's going to work with somebody else who's in, who, who fits that bill because he's got the amount of, he's got that many people coming to him. He's got nothing but choice in front of him. So the fact that he is in there working with Frank Martin by itself gives you an indication of what he thinks of the young man. Now, when this fight started, Comes out, kind of a chess match. Both men are kind of feeling each other out. But the second round was telling. I thought the second round had the ability to really be a turning point. Frank Martin started to open up. Started to land a little bit of combinations. Started to step in behind that one, two. Started to land some hard shots. He was stepping past Rivera. Getting angles, turning him a little bit. He was nullifying Rivera's jab. Everything was starting to click for him. Everything was really starting to make sense. And I was like, this could be it. They could come out here for the third round and he could just continue to step on the gas pedal, can just kind of insert his will into the fight, stay in the driver's seat, keep things going. You know, but I felt like he didn't. Yes, I gave him the third round. Yes, he won it. But I don't know, for whatever reason, I'd have to go back and watch it and really break it down. But for whatever reason, I just remember feeling like he let Rivera off the hook, so to speak. He, he, he let him back into the fight. And, and it wasn't that the second round was so drastic. It wasn't like he, he had him hurt, he had him wobbled, he dropped him or anything like that. But there's just those little things in the fight where when you're really paying attention, you get, you get that feeling that one man steps up and takes control. And I felt like the second round had that, it was that point in time where it was there for Martin to possibly do it. And I felt like he didn't. Cool, no big deal. But just something that I took note of because of the fact that we're dealing with young guys, we're dealing with a step-up fight, we're dealing with a situation where each man was facing his highest level of competition. Now, that being said, they step into the fourth and fifth rounds. I thought they were some really close rounds. I actually gave them to Rivera. The fourth and fifth rounds, when it was all said and done, out of the whole fight, they were the only rounds I gave them. They were really close, though. If you wanted to give them to Frank Martin and have him pitch a shutout, you wanted to only give him the fifth round like the Showtime announcers did, fine. Whatever. I totally see that. They were they were close rounds, but I actually gave the fourth and the fifth to Rivera. But just like I thought that we saw the, the second round being the uh, uh, having the ability to become a turning point in the fight, that's what the sixth round actually became. You know, and it, 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 it took... Derek James in between rounds in the corner. You heard him talking to Frank Martin. Why aren't you doing things? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? These are things that we trained for. You know what this guy's going to do. He's doing exactly what we expected him to do. Go out there and do X, Y, and Z. And coming to the sixth round, man, Frank Martin just stepped it up, right? He goes out there. He starts landing some nice shots. He's getting off with his combinations. He's landing his counter shots really well. Hand speed is on full display. 
And that led us directly into the seventh, man. Frank Martin just times this beautiful counter left hand. Just Rivera reaches a little bit. He, Frank pulls back, lands that counter, just floors him. And after that knockdown, that was it. Martin takes complete control of the fight, and he just stays in the driver's seat for the rest of the night. And look, that's the type of thing that you need from a young fighter. That's the type of thing that he needs to go out there and learn. It may not seem like much if you've never been in there, but having the ability to stay completely locked in with laser focus for 12 rounds, that doesn't just come natural. That needs to be taught. That needs to be learned. That needs to be practiced. Overall, it's less than 50 minutes of time, but it feels like forever. You slip up for even one second and you run the risk of just getting stretched out on the canvas. And you, know, and you need a young fighter to learn how to take control of a fight, how to finish strong. And Derek James was really in there talking to Martin in between the rounds, and you could hear him during the rounds in the 11th and the 12th telling him, you got to pick up the pace. You got to finish strong. You got to work behind that stick and walk this man down. Now think about that. Everybody in the arena by the 11th and 12th round knew that Frank Martin was in complete control, easily ahead in the fight, and he's winning. So why is his trainer telling him during the round, yelling at him, Walk this man down, stay strong, work behind that stick, land hard shots, stay focused, do not relax. It's because Derrick James knows what a young fighter needs to learn. He knows what he's going to need when things get really, really tough in these upcoming years because he's going to be fighting better competition. He knows what a young fighter needs to learn. He knows how he needs to have his man trained to be able to persevere when he faces is his most toughest test, which is going to be ahead of him, not behind him, and not tonight. And I just thought it was a great performance, man. It's a great learning opportunity, great learning experience. Frank Martin answered the bell. The only, there's only one thing that you could have potentially asked more of him. You could have hoped that he was going to be a little more aggressive. You could have possibly wanted him to be more of a finisher and come in there as a savage, maybe when he dropped him in the seventh, or maybe coming out late in the fight in the 11th and the 12th. Maybe because he had Rivera morally defeated. He knew that he wasn't going to win the fight. And it's at that point that potentially you can break a man, make him want to quit, make him want to give up and get out of there. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's what you were looking for. Maybe not. I will say this. Incredibly impressive performance by the young man. Especially considering that he's only got, what was tonight, his 17th fight. Didn't start fighting until he was 18. About to be 28 years old. But the sky's the limit. And 135 pounds, man, what a shark tank. I, you know, he went out there, he's calling out the biggest and the brightest names. Javante Davis, Devin Haney, Shakur Stevenson. Look, I don't think he's ready yet. He says he is. He says he wants them. I don't think he does. I think it sounds good. I think it sounds slick. I think if you were to step in there with those guys, every single one of them would give him a loss right now. That being said, he's still on the come up. He's still on the rise. He's still going to continue to get better. I think he looks great. And I think if we're talking about having those fights potentially in, you know, two years, three years, something like that, we could be having a far different discussion. But you put him in there against Devin Haney right now, it's going to be trouble. You put him in there against Shakur Stevenson right now, it's going to be trouble. Javante Davis, trouble. Now, I'll tell you what. He said Romale, Raleigh Romero was in the stands. He said Raleigh Romero was watching and that he could get him up with him. And that's a far different fight. Raleigh Romero isn't the most technical fighter. He's big, he's strong, he hits really hard. Yeah, he does all those things. He's got some good timing on that counter shot. But is he going to be able to handle that jab? Is he going to be able to, how's he going to handle that southpaw? We just saw him in there against Tank Davis and he got stretched. And I'm not saying that Frank Martin is a, is a Tank Davis. But I am saying that that's a fight that would be very interesting. <laughs> that's a fight that I would be looking forward to if they were making it. So let me know what you guys think. Were you as impressed with Frank Martin as I was tonight, what do you think is going to be next for him? 135 pounds, got a lot of opportunity, very top heavy. We could even see a guy like Camboso. So at this point, I don't put him up there amongst the best of the best after these last two outings against Devin Haney. Nevertheless, I think the worst you can say about Cambosos is that he's a gatekeeper. Impressive gatekeeper. Is he? Should he be next for Frank Martin? Are we talking about making a step up like that? Again, very interesting fight. So let me know what you guys think.